In this video, I'm going to talk about the varicella zoster virus and chicken pox in the dormant stage, which, which is shingles. So to start off, um, varicella is the chicken pox disease and herpes zoster is the shingles. And um, characteristics of the virus, it is a double-stranded DNA virus and it's enveloped by a capsid. And a capsid we've talked about in class, it's a protein shell and its function is to protect the virus. It also allows it to attach, attach to the host cell more easily. And um, this virus is also surrounded by a lipid membrane. Um, this virus is very interesting in how it uh, replicates and how it infects our body. I've learned a lot researching it. So first, it starts off by entering the respiratory epithelial cells. And once it infects these cells, it can infect um, all types. It gets into the cell by fusing its own membrane with the cell membrane. And once it fuses together, it's going to release its capsid into the cell. And we've learned a lot about how viruses um, infect us. So the capsid is going to bind to the nucleus. And once it binds, it can inject its viral DNA. And this is when the viral DNA is copied. And after it's copied, the genes are going to be transcribed into RNA. And then once the RNA is transcribed, it's going to reach ribosomes. And when it reaches the ribosomes, these, um, the RNA is translated into capsid proteins. And this is very important for the virus because the capsid and the viral DNA are then going to fuse together. And they're going to go find the Golgi complex. And this is where they acquire their lipid membrane, which is what I talked about on the slide before. Um, and once they get this lipid membrane they're happy and they're going to leave this cell and after they leave the cell a dead cell is um, left behind and this is why it's so important for uh, why people say to cover your mouth when you uh, cough or cover your nose when you sneeze because this is how the dead cells are released into the air because when a person sneezes or coughs the dead cells um, leave the lungs and they get released into the air so this is why it's very important to get va vaccinated because you could be walking beside someone in the hall and they'd be infected with this virus and then you can easily acquire it so it's very very important to get your vaccinations but after contact with um, the virus, it's going to replicate in the epithelial cells. And it's picked up by immune cells, and from there it's transported to the lymph nodes, which is shown in this um, image right here. And after it infects the lymph nodes, it causes a primary infection, which is called varicella. And that is the chicken pox. And this virus has two stages, which is the primary viremia and the secondary viremia. And I'm going to talk about uh, both of these. So the primary viremia first infects the liver and spleen immune system, which is called the reticulendothelial system. And this is made of phagocytic cells. And we've talked about phagocytosis in class the engulfing of cells and it's just the initial spread of the virus in the blood and around two weeks after entering the body comes the secondary viremia stage and this is when the virus starts infecting the T cells and the T cells express proteins that will bind to the receptors on the skin so this is kind of like um, hitching a ride in T cells to get to the skin so this is how the virus is going to reach the skin and once it once it reaches the skin the virus is going to infect uh, keratinocytes and this is skin cells and all the infected cells can start fusing together so this is why you see chicken pox spread um, over the body in clusters so the bumps you see are a group a cluster of these cells and that's called a zinc cell and this virus can also infect sensory neurons on the skin and the adaptive immune system will kick in and most viruses are then eliminated but some can be left behind and remain in the latent state and we've talked about this in class as well um, this is um, also called the dormant state so if the immune system were to become weak, the virus bit can become active again, it can come back alive, and when this happens, the virus will then travel to the sensory nerves and infect the skin again, and this is called um, herpes zoster. So this is shingles, and this image can show you um, what shingles are like. But um, a few symptoms and facts about chickenpox, like I said, they're going to be um, small red 
blisters that can cause mild headaches, rashes, fevers, and sometimes it can cause um, nausea. The fevers are mostly common in adults, and um, this this disease is called by the varicella zoster virus, and it's also called VZV a lot. A lot of videos I watched, they mentioned it, VZV. Um, it's rare to have it more than once. And the vaccine was introduced in the mid-1990s. And like I said, it's very, very important to get vaccinated because this disease is very, very, very contagious. Um, it can spread through saliva, coughing, sneezing, and contact with another person with this. So if the fluid from the blisters were to um, reach you, then you could um, be acquire this virus. Um, the, and the, it, this remains... Uh, extremely contagious until all the blisters are crusted over and they first develop in clusters and they generally appear around the face, the chest, the stomach, and the limbs and they're just small red itchy spots and most of the time blisters will develop on top of the spots and they become very very itchy and within 48 hours the blisters start to dry up and begin to crust so this is how you know um, you're near the end of this infection when they start to crust and around 10 days the crust will start to fall off and um, through the cycle of having this disease new spots can occur and um, it was kind of hard for me to understand this at first, but this is just because uh, simply cells are going through different life cycles at all times. So a spot on your arm might um, develop a few days before a spot on your leg, but this is just because it's replicating faster. So this uh, virus is just becoming active faster on your arm rather than your legs. So it is possible that they occur um, at different times and they could fall off at different times, crest over at different times. So this is just because the cells are replicating faster in different places. And most individuals do make a full recovery from this disease and we're so very lucky to have vaccinations now. And so it's very important that we take advantage of these vaccinations and become knowledgeable about this disease so that we do not get infected with the varicella zoster virus.